the question, the question everybody keeps asking me lately, sips tea for this one. Are you ever going to switch airlines? Um. Hi guys and welcome back to another video. I am Alexia Nicole and I'm living my life by design. Thank you all for stopping by for another video. And as you can tell by the title of this video, this is going to be a question and answer type of video um, and maybe a life update if some of the questions lead to those topics. Um, as you can tell, maybe I'm at home in Houston. Aspen's over here being a mama's boy, right? He always has to be like two inches away from me. Denver's on her bed over there being nice and chill like she always is. So hear any background noises it's probably the dogs um but a few weeks ago this video is been has been so postponed a few weeks ago on my instagram i posted one of those ask me questions and i told them that i would answer the questions in a video coming soon and it's been like three weeks so i did not forget i do apologize for the delay um but sit down videos are so much harder for me to do um than vlogs because with the vlog i just whip out the phone the camera record whatever's on my mind and go with the sit down videos I gotta sit down I gotta make sure the lighting is right I gotta make sure the background is semi clean and decent you know all of that so it just takes a little bit more energy but I'm home I have some downtime so I'm gonna do it um, if I'm not looking at the camera I apologize I have the questions up on my computer here which is just easier for me to do it that way so let's just go ahead and jump right into the first I'm not going to read names because I don't want to slaughter anybody's name. And on the Instagram ones, I don't like, they're, they're private. So I don't know if, you know, people wanted me to say who they were. So anyways, um, are new reserves able to pick up trips? By the way, your channel is so helpful. Thank you. Um, at the airline that's near and dear to my heart, yes, I'm back to being near and dear after my crazy trip. Um... <laughs> we can reserves can pick up trips on their days off so if you're just off just completely off you're not scheduled reserve you're more than welcome to pick up a trip now there are um rules and regulations to that um because you have to have so much rest in between this and when you're on reserve it's still technically like work so you um you have to have basically before your reserve block starts you have to have 12 hours of rest um, since your last trip, since the last time you worked. So, but yes, if the basic answer is yes, can reserves pick up trips? Yes, on your off days. And then there's also a thing called pref bidding. So if you are scheduled reserve and you really want to work, if there are trips in open time, and open time is basically trips that need people to, to work. So they'll either end up calling a reserve or a line holder will pick them up on their day off. But if you're actually scheduled reserve that day, you can bid for um, you can bid for a pref bid saying, oh, I'm on reserve this day, but I would like to work this trip. And if you're senior enough, then you can hold it. Okay, so I hope that answers that. Same young lady asks, does the airline near and dear to your heart have a max amount of hours a new hire can fly? Um, everybody in my airline has the same max amount of hours that you can fly, and that's 150 hours. That's not the same at all airlines, that's just what it is at my airline. So it doesn't, it doesn't matter how new or old, junior or senior you are, 150 hours is the max hours. Ooh, the question, the question everybody keeps asking me lately, sips tea for this one. Are you ever going to switch airlines? Um, if an opportunity presented itself and it fit my lifestyle better, yeah, I would switch airlines. It's, it's really that simple for me. Like, I love my airline, y'all know that. Um, they gave me the first opportunity to get into this field of aviation, and I truly appreciate it, but your girl ain't no dummy, okay? Like, it's not the best airline, it's not the worst airline. I really don't even know what the best airline is. I'm not even gonna say that part, scratch that. But um, do I think there are other airlines out there that might fit the lifestyle that I dream to have better? Absolutely, if that opportunity presented itself, would I go? Absolutely. Did I like commuting when I didn't have a crash pad? Um, so, just to rewind, I've been a flight attendant for about a year and a half. And I've never not really had, um, I don't really live in a crash pad for one. I have an apartment where I signed a lease and I just have roommates, so it's not a crash pad. 
Um, it's only four of us that live there. Me and Fawn just happen to share the bigger room. Um, and I've pretty much always been a commuter, but I'm not like a hardcore commuter where I fly back home after all of my trips. Like, I don't do that. As y'all can tell, like, I, I prefer to stack all of my trips and um, just work back to back to back for about two or three weeks. Um, and if I have a day off or whatever, then I'll just sp stay the night in New York. And then I like to come home for at least five days. So if I can't come home for five days, then I'm probably just not going to come home. Um, so that's the best answer that I have for that. But do I like commuting? No. Um, will I ever become an official, like, hardcore commuter? Yes, because I got to get out of New York. I, I can't take it no more. How do you reserve a flight when you want to go on vacation? So we have options. We can buy a full price fare, just like any other consumer out there, and we can go like that. Um, or we can do what we call Z Fair. If you go back and watch my Paris video, the second the second portion of the Paris video, um, Fawn actually um, tells you what the definition of a Z Fair is. But that is basically like buying a discounted, a very, very, very discounted ticket um, on another airline, but you do fly standby. So. For me, when I want to go on a vacation, like I have a vacation planned in the next few months or so, I don't necessarily buy my ticket too far in advance. Like you can really buy it the day before or the day of because you're flying standby. So, you know, for me, it's always best to wait to the last moment to actually buy the ticket to see if I'm going to be able to get on the flight or not. Um, and that's really it. Um, if I'm flying on my airline that's near and dear to my heart, you can pretty much book as far in advance as you want because I have the option to actually see those loads. Loads meaning how much, how many people the aircraft can hold and how many people have already booked a seat so I can see what the availability is like. So, I mean, that is, that's pretty much it. Um, yeah, but there's um, how do you actually reserve it? Um, once you become a flight attendant or whatever, once, once you get in the aviation industry, you'll realize that they have websites for you to do all these things on depending on the What's airline. What's your favorite part to? about being an in-flight crew member? I get asked this question every time I do a Q&A. Uh, hey, Serge. I know you don't mind me calling you out. Hey, Serge. Hey, Serge. Now, I think my favorite part would be since I do work Mint, um, and I do have a lot of other goals in life other than being an in-flight crew member, I meet a lot of different people in a lot of different businesses and just that do a lot of different things in in life you know and i get to talk to them in depth sometime if they're up for it and it just really opens my eyes to a lot of other things i learn things so that's my pretty much my favorite part right now is just meeting people and getting to learn new and great things and things that i just never knew and i like that part of you know even things that i already know and you can have good dialogue and they open my mind up to something else so yeah, that that's my favorite part. Also, right what now. is your favorite non-mint layover? Thank you so much, <laughs> Serge. Um, my favorite non-mint layover. Gosh, I haven't had a non-mint layover since um, February. It's now what month is it? September. Um, I'm gonna have to say one of the islands just because I'm an island girl. You know, I really liked, um, I liked Barbados and I liked Trinidad a lot. Um, but, oh yeah, I'm, I'm just going to go with those. Whatever island, just send me to an island with some water and I'm going to like it. So I have a question about tattoos. So no airlines don't take people with small tattoos. I have one close to my wrist. So she's asking, do any, do I know of any airlines that take people with tattoos? Obviously, y'all know I have tutus. This one is always showing when I'm outside of uniform. I have another big cross on my back. Let me see if y'all can see that. Uh, give y'all a little view of that one right there. I have that cross on my back. Um, oh, Lord. And then I have another one on the inside of my ankle right here. So, yes, my airline does accept people with tattoos, but you just have to cover them up. That's that's really it. There are airlines that are very strict and don't want you to have any at all. But the airline that's near dear to my heart, they're accepting of them. They just have to be covered while you are in uniform. Okay? So the one on your wrist, and that's the other thing. Like, some just have to say they can't be seen. My airline actually 
allows you to cover them with band-aids or makeup so you know it just depends you kind of just have to fill out the airline and see what they say about it honestly but th those are the rules in my airline did you have to learn speech before training if so how do you do it speech um I'm gonna I don't I'm not really sure what you mean by speech I can only assume that you're from another country that first language is not English um, my first language is English it's the only language that I speak and a little patwa if you want to you know go there um so no I did not have to learn um, proper English I, I think I already speak proper English on most days. Can my tongue get a little relaxed every now and then? Absolutely, I'm human. Um, but I would just suggest using one of those apps. What's the app? By, uh, du Duolingo, I think. And um, just practice your English. That's, that's really all that I can say. It's not necessarily anything that they're gonna teach you in training. I was in initial training with a lot of people whose first language is Spanish. I um, mean, you can definitely tell, but as long as whatever they were trying to say came across clearly and you can understand them, that's okay. I mean, accents are not, are not judged at all. Like, I think they're beautiful. What destination would you love your airline to add? Um, as basic as this may be, Hawaii, like, come on now. <laughs> Like, I haven't been to Hawaii yet. We don't fly to Hawaii, and I'm just like, like, let's get there. We need a plane that can get us to Hawaii, according um, to them. What is the earliest hour you've had to wake up for work, and how do you get yourself to wake up? Um, so, the earliest hour I've had to wake up will probably be, be 2 a.m. So, our reserve shifts start at 2 a.m., and they end at basically 2 a.m. Well, 12. So I guess there's like a two hour where there's two hours in between where there isn't really anybody like scheduled because all flights should technically be done by that time. And then by 2 a.m. is when the first person goes back on reserve. So I've been called at 2 a.m. before on reserve. Like literally like my reserve schedule would be from 2 a.m. to 12 p.m. And they've literally called me at 2.05 a.m. to say, hey, we either need you to come in to the airport standby or, or, hey, we have, you know, a flight for you to work that departs at 5 and your report time is at 4 a.m. or whatever the case may be. Um, I'm kind of a heavy sleeper if I'm, like, super tired. But for the most part, if I know I have to go to work and if I know I'm on call, um, I'm not, I'm going to just hear my phone ring. Like, it's, it's that simple for me. Um, so yeah, 2 a.m. is the earliest, um, but like if I'm like within a trip, like, you know, just actually already working, um, we, we have some early, early reports, you know, I've had to wake up at four before, depending on wherever I'm at. So yeah, I mean, get ready for it. If you're not a morning person, some airlines have it to where you can bid for a.m. and p.m. reserve and things like that, but I think that even may still take some time to get to. So, yeah, just get ready. Be up for 24 um, hours sometimes. Can you get a schedule that returns you home at night, and will you get your the basis you ask for? Can you get a schedule that returns you home at night? So, when you first start reserve, your blocks are usually anywhere in between two to six days, back to back to back to back. Um... And when you're on reserve, they can give you whatever you want. Once you're a line holder, that'll make a huge difference because you have a lot more control over what you work. Now, when we do our schedules, we bid for trips. They send us a long list of every single flight and pairing and how they have them, you know, put together in a schedule. And you bid for what you want to work. And as y'all know, bids go off of seniority. So you can bid for all turns, which turns are some turns are... You start at base and then you end your day at base. No layovers. So that's what you're asking. Yes, that does exist, but you have to be able to be, you know, you have to be senior enough to hold that. Or you can try to swap and drop on Flickr all the time. Flickr is our scheduling system. So it's a possibility, but it'll probably just take some work in the beginning because there's a lot of people that only work turns because they want to start their day. They kind of want to have like a, a nine to five job where 
they go to work in the morning, they work their flight there, they work their flight back, or how many other flights it may be in that day, and then they end their day at night so they can go home and be with their family. I think it's an amazing thing. Um, there's a lot of women, men, that do that, so yes, it is possible. And there's an airline, Allegiant. Allegiant Airline is an airline that only does turns. So they might not have all the fancy destinations that you want, but it doesn't matter because you're just doing turns. So wherever you're based, all of their schedules start and end in base. They don't technically have any layovers. Now, if they have a mechanical or something like that, then I'm sure that'll probably, you know, be a different situation. But the whole basis of their scheduling is to start and end at your base. So they do turns. Um, and will you get your base that you ask for? Once again, you bid for bases. It goes by seniority. But the most important thing to know is the airline is going to put you where they need you. So you can ask for it, but you may not get it. And then you can eventually transfer into it. But that goes in by seniority as well. Next question. What would it take for you to do flight attendant training again? For me, I didn't really have a huge struggle with flight attendant training. Was it intense? Absolutely. Um, was I tired? Yes. But just grasping the information and learning it, like that part wasn't really that hard for me. So it wasn't a big struggle. So honestly, like I was just saying, like would I switch airlines? If the right opportunity presented itself, then yeah, I would switch airlines. And then yes, that means I would have to go back to flight attendant training. So, okay. So that's it for all the questions that I had on Instagram. Now I'm going to go and answer some of the um, comment slash questions that y'all put on my videos. Um, Jane Starr says, this is back from my first vlog that I did heading to flight attendant training. Um, she says, hey Alexia, can you make a video on how to prepare for training beforehand? Like what to bring, what to study, and all of that stuff. I would say the airline that I work for, airline near and dear to my heart, they sent us about a month out, they sent us a pre-arrival guide that basically gives you all of that information. So if you're going to train with my airline, trust me, they're going to send you all this stuff up. They truly do set you up for success, I think. Um, but just a few things that I would say what to study. Um, the simplest thing to kind of study is airline codes. Air, and um, Not airline codes, but maybe even airline codes, but um, airport codes. Um, that's just kind of good to know offhand. Um, but every airline, you know, wants you to study different things. So I don't want to be too specific about this because I've only trained with one airline. Um, and like what kind of stuff to bring. I mean, just think of it as you're going off to college. If you've never went off to college, think of it as you're going off to summer camp. You know, just what would you think? Just the things that you bring when you're not at home, basically. Um... Once again, my airline is kind of special. They really did just give us the works. Like, we really didn't need to bring anything but our clothes, you know, and whatever cosmetics and skincare stuff that you may use, you know, bathroom type of stuff. Toiletries. There's the word, toiletries. Um, but, yeah, that's really all that I brought. Some people, you know, like to bring um, sentimental things, blankets, candles, photos. I didn't bring all of that. Um, so, yeah, um, I just brought the clothes that I needed to wear for class time, which was business casual. And then I brought clothes to wear during downtime, which was whatever. Um, I brought workout clothes because I worked out. Um, that's really it. Besides my toiletries and cosmetics, that was it. Um, and I really, 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 really do not think it's smart to try to jump ahead in studying because you don't know how your airline is going to train you. And for my airline, it, to me, it was never smart to try to jump ahead and see, you know, what was going to be next because they taught us things a certain way for it to make sense. So if you try to jump ahead of the game, then it would really just confuse you. So the basic thing that you can really study are airport codes. YouTube hacked by PTA. Hey girl. Hey, how's Fawn? Excellent video, of course. Thank you. Fawn is good. Um, Fawn hasn't been in as many of my videos as she used to um, back when we were on reserve because we were on reserve and we spent a lot of time at the apartment not doing nothing. Um, but Fawn is also in Mint, so she flies quite a bit as well and we don't really fly trips together. 
Um, we did it one time and it was all right. I probably won't fly with it again. Whatever. Uh, <laughs> people just work differently, right? Um, but she's good. She's good. Eternal Lux, I think that's how you pronounce that, right? They say, was Spike Lee the first celeb on one of your flights? Was Spike Lee the first celebrity on my flight? No, he was not. Especially in Mint, we have a lot, a lot, a lot of celebrities, um, whatever you want to call them. You know, they, they fly Mint a lot. Um, I'm not really into name dropping like that. I just I, I just said his name just because like I was just telling the story. But no, he was not the first celeb. I've had quite a few on my flights. And they're usually always pretty nice too. Random question from Javaris. I think I'm saying that right. I love you bunches, LOL, but when you're non-rev, you know you're traveling for leisure. Can you bring checked bags? How is this possible when y'all are taking international trips? How can you get past security with a huge plane then possibly check it at the gate lol so when we're non-rev when we're non-rev and we're flying standby we get we are awarded the same amount of checked bags it's basically like they're giving us a ticket as whatever the the normal ticket is that allows check bags so we can check bags so if you i'm flying on my airline when you buy whatever the regular rate i really don't even know what it's called but regular rate tickets, you know, some airlines, they, they sell like different tickets. So you have like the, the low fare where you don't get any check bags, just one personal bag. And then you can do one check bag or two check bags or whatever. They have all these different fares. We get the one that allows you to check two check bags when we're standing, when we're flying standby. So yes, I can bring check bags. I do it all the time because I'm lazy. So when I come home to Houston from New York, I usually put all my dirty clothes in one big check bag and I check it on the plane and I pick it up when I get here. Now flying internationally, I learned my lesson in Paris and I will probably never check another check bag going international. I'm not gonna say that, you know, they're gonna lose my baggage all the time, but it's really just a headache and I have still yet to get back my cosmetic, my bag that I checked with all my cosmetics and toiletries. Um, but yeah, I mean it's it's the same. Like we don't we don't roll through with the the big old bag. Like we still have to follow the rules of overhead bin size and all of that stuff at the gate, especially traveling internationally. Domestically, mm, maybe so because we go through the different um, security, but internationally we don't. So yeah, we just check our bags like everybody else does. Stand by. And they know like they they put the ticket on there and if you get on the plane and they put your bag on the plane. That's how it works. From okay, Damien Blanton says, hey Damien, I know this isn't Q&A time, so maybe you can include the answer in the upcoming vlog, but have you ever encountered a racist passenger? How do you handle the situation like that? Also, do you see many gay FAs dealing with homophobia from passengers? Wow. Um. That's a good question, Damien. It's a real question because, right, I mean, the world that we live in, those type of things still exist. Homophobia definitely still exists. Racism definitely still exists. Um, but have I ever encountered a racist passenger? I'm sure I have. Ask me, if you growl at me one more time, we're going to have a problem. If you don't want me moving, go sit over there. He, like, but this dog here? Like, cause he's comfortable and he doesn't want to be affected in my just in my my situation. He gets mad and grouse. Anyways, um, sidetracked. But yeah, I'm sure I've encountered plenty of racist customers. <sighs> this is really a hard question to answer. I'm not gonna say that I don't pay any attention because I'm a black woman that works on an aircraft where at the end of the day flight attendants and pilots have the authority um and a lot of people don't like that you know they don't like someone else having authority over them so you do you catch a lot of people regardless of if they're racist or not that always want to give you a little pushback you know they they want to see what you're going to do when they say no and 
I don't play them games on my flights. I don't play those games. I'm not the one that's going to kick you off the airplane, you know, immediately because you said no. But I, I'm, I'm, I'm real straight to the point with it. I'm very, 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 very straight to the point. Like, this is what it is. These are your options. Like, get with it or get lost. Like, that's more of my mentality. It doesn't come off necessarily like that all the time. I try to make it as pleasant as possible, but you definitely have to stand your ground, especially when you're going to work a six-hour flight and somebody thinks that they're going to keep pushing over on you. So, so that, that in general, just dealing with, you know, customers that are going to give you pushback is one thing that you have to deal with on a daily basis because there's always somebody that's going to give you pushback. Now, the racist part, now, if you're being blatantly racist, you know, and this hasn't happened to me, thank, whew, thank you, Jesus. It hasn't happened to me. Um, I've definitely heard of it happening to other people where um, people are being called the N-word or, you know, they're just, they're saying things that you know are racist in derogatory terms. Um... And honestly, for me, I wouldn't deal with it. If it was, if somebody was to come straight to me and, and say some mess to me like that, I'm calling the captain and we're getting this person off the plane. Like, it's in, in the store. It actually happened to one of my um, my friends that I was in initial training with, Peter. Hey, Peter, cute little Jamaican girl. She's super sweet, super, super sweet. And on one of her first, first flights out of training, she was working like a JFK to Boston. You know, one of these short flights. And there was a gentleman that basically said, I, you know, I don't want to be on this flight with this black girl. There was a little bit more to it, but that's what he said. So she called the captain and went back to the gate because this is after they had pushed back, did the safety demo. Um, she called the captain. She said she was uncomfortable. She felt, you know, she didn't feel safe. That's the key word right there, y'all. Let, let me tell you, safe, okay? As soon as you hit that, I don't feel safe. <laughs> and that's the end of everything no more questions about nothing <laughs> um but yeah so it definitely happens i haven't encountered it myself i'm sure i've encountered a lot of undercover racism racism and things like that you know there's there's a lot of times when i'm in the aisle and you know you're doing drink or beverage service and people don't want to look at you in the eye or you know like don't want to like accidentally touch you or you know like there, there's those little things and for me I just let that stuff roll off my shoulder like as long as you ain't giving me no issues then you can sit over there and be stupid all day I don't care you know just sit on the plane do you don't bother nobody don't bother me get get you to your destination safely and we're good to go um so yeah that's just what I assume how I would handle it if it was a safety issue um then yes um, other than that, whatever, you know, what, what's the saying? Sticks and stones may break my bones, but words, words, words can never hurt me or something like that. Like, I don't, I don't care what you got to say. I don't care. I don't care. Also, do you see many gay FAs dealing with homophobia from passengers? This would have been a really good question for me to ask my last crew because all three of those gentlemen, I know some of y'all was out there, you know, giving Ron some haze and talking about, ooh, he cute and he cute. Yes, they were all cute and yes, they were all gay, okay? Um, so it would have been a really great question for me to ask those guys. But once again, yes, you know, I, I know they do. I, I know they do. Um... And it's basically just the same, the same thing, you know, as long as nobody is just being downright dirty and disrespectful to you, then it's honestly just a part of life, not even just because you're up in a plane, you know, you just, those are things that you just have to deal with in society. Um, now, if somebody, if I was the number one on a flight and one of my crew members said, oh, this person feels blah, 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 a certain way about me, they told me this, then the situation will be handled. You know, like, I never want any of my crew to feel uncomfortable doing their job. And if you're going to be disrespectful to my crew, then you can get off the plane. Like, we have to do this job with the utmost respect for our customers, and they should have the same respect for us, regardless of how you feel about the lifestyle that I live or my skin color or whatever that may be. So, I hope that really answers your question. Don't ever let something like that deter you from 
going for this job or dream because anywhere you go in life you're going to encounter these type of situations and you have to know how to handle it just on a daily basis but as far as being on the aircraft in those situations there's i think there's a fine line that you kind of have to learn to to straddle like you can't be a pushover in those type of situations because if you're on a long flight and they see that they're you know they're they're getting to you they're gonna keep going um, I had a situation like that with one of my crew members and, you know, it didn't end well. Um, but you also can't necessarily exert your authority with these people all the time either. You know, not, not to the full max, you know, you can let them know, you know, the rules and regulations that they have to follow. And if they can't, then sure. But you don't want to, I wouldn't just get on and be like, Blah, 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 blah. I'm the flight attendant. You got to follow my rules. And if you can't, you can get off the plane and get fined and blah, blah, Like, no. So you just have to figure out that balance in between and see if that customer is willing to pull, you know, pull back and chill. And if they're not, then. Okay. And I think it. this might be one of the last questions. Malik Pilgrim says, are you tired of flying to the same places? No, I'm not tired of flying to the same places because I actually enjoy going to the West Coast on my layovers. Would I want to live there? Not necessarily unless it's San Diego because San Diego is my favorite layover and I just really like that city. Um, but I enjoy just getting to go to that side of the world and doing East Coast a little bit and then coming home and just like having my downtime and relaxing. If I was doing... Um, going back to core and doing all the same destination, um, doing all of our destinations, but you really don't really even get to touch all of our destinations because uh, certain bases have certain layovers and things like that. And I would technically, I would still be on reserve, so I really wouldn't even have full control. I'd probably just still be getting stuck with those little East Coast cities that I really didn't enjoy going to. So no, I am happy that I know that I get to go to the West Coast um, and I'm actually learning more and more about these cities as I go. So it's still like I can live my life and say, okay, if I need to do this, I need to do that. I can just go here. Like I know my surroundings so well now, it's really like a third home for me, any of those cities that I go to. So I, I enjoy it. I don't, I haven't got tired of it yet. And if I'm tired of it, I just stay in the hotel room and chill, save some money. So yeah, I think that is it. <laughs> For the question and answers, um, none of them really led into a life update, but I do know that a lot of you all want a keto update, um, and I'm, I'm going to do one one day. I don't know when that day is going to come, um, but keto's going good. Um, yeah, that's all I can really say. I'm seeing changes in my body still. Um, I haven't really lost a lot of more, um, weight as far as what the scale shows, but I can definitely still see the inches in my body. Like my arms are getting smaller and more toned. My waist is getting smaller, all that good stuff. So I will do a full keto update. Um, what I'll probably do is like a, what I eat in a day type of keto thing on just like my basic day and, um, my workout and all of that. But anyways, I hope you all enjoyed this Q&A. If you have any other questions that you want answered, if you want them answered immediately, um, the best way to do that is to um, inbox me on Instagram, send me just a direct message, and usually I answer those pretty quickly. Um, or if you just have another question that you want answered later on, just go ahead and comment down below, and I will get to it when I can, okay? Until next time, make sure you subscribe, like, and share. Oh, oh wait, wait, wait. We are almost at 3,000 subscribers, which is super exciting. Let me tell y'all the exact number that we're at. Oh, look at that. Right now, we are 150 people away from 3,000 subscribers. So if you have any friends, family, loved ones, other aspiring flight attendants that you know, or just somebody that might enjoy my vlogs, go ahead and share with them and make sure that they subscribe. Okay, I would love to see the 3,000 sometimes soon. Thank you all for watching, and until next time, peace.